Homer Sports and Cook Cable Vision of Syracuse presents Syracuse Football. Today's game is brought to you by the Sheridan University Inn and Conference Center at Syracuse University. Syracuse's only AAA rated Ford Diamond Hotel. By Donardo Ford, your Southwest County Ford dealer. The Track and Racket Club, offering Club Pack, a dream come true at a price you won't lose any sleep over. And by the Sports Car Center of Syracuse, test drive an 88 Saab today at the Sports Car Center, 5800 Bridge Street, East Syracuse. If the Penn State route ushered in a new era, today's game closes one out. In 1908, they built Archibald Stadium and it became the permanent home of the Syracuse Colgate game. In 1924, this man, Roy Simmons, quarterback Syracuse to a 7-3 victory. It would be Syracuse's last for 13 years. Vic Hansen, who won one, tied one, lost one as a player, 0 for 6 against Colgate as a coach. The bane of my existence, that game. In 1937, Colgate had a losing season, but they defeated Syracuse 7-0. A year later, it was Syracuse winning by a score of 7-0. The celebrations were so great, they stopped the trains and the trolleys through downtown. The Andy Kerr era was highly successful, but Syracuse started to dominate in the series. Colgate's last win, 1950. Alan Egler running wild for 167 yards. Ben Schwartzwilder's only loss to Colgate, but a bitter one. Colgate beat us, and it was horrible. It, it was the game, and uh, uh, that's the way they thought about it. There were parades, there were bonfires, there was scalping of heads, there were leaflets dropped on the campuses from airplanes, all part of the Syracuse-Colgate rivalry. It will end with Colgate holding the upper hand in the all-time series. But moments like this one will never be forgotten. Jimmy Brown in 1956, six touchdowns, seven extra points, an all-time NCAA record of 43 points. Syracuse and Colgate, the memories are great. Beat Syracuse, beat Colgate. Remember the last hurrah. So for the 65th and perhaps final time of this century, it is the Colgate Red Raiders 4-3 against the undefeated nationally ranked Syracuse Orangemen. We'll be right back. Maybe you think the Giants will win it all this season. Or maybe you think the Bears will be tougher than ever. And what about the Broncos or the 49ers? And who will be on top in college football come January? I'm Harry Carson, and no one knows the winners for sure. But here's one sure winner for every football fan. The Sporting News. Everything you need to know. Results, schedules, roster moves, and more every week. Detailed reports on all the teams. Hard-hitting inside information. More facts and stats than all the others combined. Plus, up-to-the-minute news of baseball, basketball, and hockey. Now, here's news of a great half-price offer. Take a tip from Harry Carson and get in on this great half-price offer. Just call 1-800-553-4040 and receive 40 issues of the Sporting News for four easy payments of only $545. That's a savings of one half off the regular subscription rate. So call now, 1-800-553-4040. That's 1-800-553-4040. And back in the Carrier Dome, Syracuse and Colgate getting set to meet for the 65th and perhaps the final time in a series that dates all the way back to 1891 and essentially has not been out of Syracuse, whether it's Archibald Stadium or the Carrier Dome, since 1908. Hello again, everybody. Dave Cohen along with Dale Drypolcher. The Orange Men are undefeated. They're nationally ranked, and Colgate has really got an uphill struggle today. Colgate, a good running team, pretty good defensive team, but they're meeting Syracuse when the Orange Men are on an absolute roll. This may be the most talented Syracuse team of all time. I would have to agree with you there, and, and if Colgate is going to pull off, which would be a magnificent upset, they have to have everything click. They have to be in a real emotional high, and Syracuse would really have to be down. I don't think that's going to happen today. Uh, I hope that they can make a good game of it. Uh, that's not to denigrate Colgate, but as you said, Colgate uh, is not in the league of Syracuse this year. Well, Colgate has absolutely nothing to lose, so they might decide to take a gamble, and they certainly have the man to do that with in Kenny Gale who's just a sensational runner. Well, he's second in the NCAA Division II, I should say, uh, Division I AA, a uh, rushing. He's a very talented man. He gets the ball out of the back. He'll do anything to get him the ball because he really does key the offense. He runs out of a tailback, as he does here, or a wingback spot. 
As I said, he'll throw the bubble. Watch the moves he's got. And about 190 pounds, he's got good power and good height. He's an excellent athlete, and, and Coach Mack said he's Division I player in uh, 1AA, and he said uh, he's really good. He is not that small, as Dale said. He's 190 pounders. He is regarded as an NFL professional prospect. And Kenny Gamble, the all-time, all-purpose running back in Division 1AA. He's got a shot at becoming the all-time rushing leader, the all-time point scorer, the all-time touchdown maker in Division 1AA. Of course, Syracuse is the number six rated defense in the country, and number six against the run. So I wonder, Dale, whether you think Colgate might decide to establish some kind of passing game, even though they've had all sorts of problems at quarterback. We talked about that. One of the problems, they have had three different quarterbacks. They've thrown 19 interceptions, Dave. That's not good. You don't want to come in here and let the Syracuse defense score on you. I think that they might, are going to be a little bit torn whether they should establish gamble and let everybody know they're going to run the ball, or as you say, try to mix it up and throw the ball a little bit. I'll be surprised if they throw early. I think they will throw the ball, but I think they're going to try to establish gamble the best they can. We'll see. Syracuse is not only undefeated and nationally ranked, they're also probably among the top two or three teams in the country in terms of entertainment. It all begins with the offensive center, John Garrett, unsung like most offensive linemen are. But we asked John, what's the toughest thing about being a center on a multi-dimensional offensive team? The toughest thing for me as a center probably is a block back, blocking back against somebody. Somebody in an even defense, man, to come hard and they're penetrating hard, getting my head in front of them. Thinking of when you're an offensive lineman, you really can't think. It's got to be more of an instinct of what to do each play. Um, through Coach DeLeon, I think we've learned that. I mean, there's really no question that as to anything that's going on up front. We all know what's going on. It's, he's a great coach, and we just we, we do what he asks of us, which is a lot. And we don't get much credit for it, but I think on Saturdays, it's so far so good. Well, John Garrett's offensive linemen don't really think. They just have to react. But they're among the most intelligent and articulate players on any football team. And you know what's interesting? John Garrett calls out the blocking assignment. So they have to do a lot of thinking at the last minute. That big, dumb offensive lineman, I think, is a thing of the past, Dave. And speaking of George DeLeon, this year, for the first time, he has the title of offensive coordinator. He is the man who does a lot of the play calling up in the booth. And from the very first play of the season, that halfback option against Maryland, to the first play against Penn State, the play calling has really been something special. I've been, I've been calling the plays here for three years, and um, I think that I haven't really changed much. I think what's happened uh, to us, to be quite frankly, is that uh, play calling, I think, is overrated in the sense that we make those decisions based on down and distance situations, based on game plan thoughts, based on film breakdown, computer review uh, of the game prior to the game. In other words, that's all done during the week by our staff. It's my job, more or less, to, to uh, pick out the best play in those situations and make the call. So most of it is done during the week, and uh, i, I got to give credit to our staff again, and most of all, our players who executed. Heck, I haven't made one blocker, scored one touchdown yet this year. That's offensive coordinator George DeLeon. And Dale, what is this? Well, that's a little significance of the uh, Citrus Bowl. I talked to a couple of the scouts. There have been some here last week and there'll be this week. And they said one of the things they like about Syracuse is they're exciting offensively, just what we were talking about. And they do like that. And they were here last week and said, boy, if they can do it again this week, they're really high on our list. So the Florida Citrus Bowl, among others, very excited about Syracuse football. And Syracusans are excited about any place warm come the first of the year. <laughs> we'll be back with the opening kickoff, Syracuse and Colgate, right after this. for the mountains, Bush. and the beer that goes down smooth as a mountain stream. Sure, everyone. How about this in here? Head for the mountains of Bush. Beer for the mountains. The Bruins on Nesson. It's time for another season of exclusive coverage of all home games. And this year, everyone is cheering for the Bruins. I'm with the Bruins. I'm with the Bruins. You better believe I'm with the Bruins. I'm with the Bruins. As a matter of fact, I'm such a Bruins fan that during the summer, you know, the off season, me and Ma, we stand in front of the refrigerator, open it up, and put little Bruins figures in the freezer just to practice cheering. Sometimes folks come from next door, and we all stand around that freezer cheering right into it. Go, Bruins, go. 
Except that one summer when Mrs. Hunyadi's canary jingles flew into the freezer and we shut it, didn't even know the poor bird was in there, but... Ah, what the heck? It's all for a good cause. Go Bruins! Join the cheering section. Catch all the Bruins home games right here on Nesson. Racing action heats up on Nesson. The Winston Cup Wrangler 400, Sunday, November 15th at 8.30 p.m. And as they used to say in the days of old Archbold, out of the West come the Orange Men, the undefeated Syracuse Orange Men, who have a record of 6-0. They have climbed into the top 10 in the major polls of the country, the Associated Press media poll and the UPI coaches poll, ranked number nine in each and you've got to go way back into the mid to early 60s for the last time Syracuse had such a lofty ranking. Syracuse and Colgate, a series that we've told you dates back to 1891. And once they built Archbold Stadium, they decided to keep it here, the permanent site in Syracuse. Nick McPherson, that's his career record at Syracuse now. He is at 536 wins, 36 losses, and one tie. Syracuse has won seven games in a row. Nick uh, shaking hands with Ivan Fears, his wide receiver coach. Back again going with the sport jacket. He's undefeated in the sport jacket, telling his team to back up, stay off the sideline. There's not much room here in the carrier zone. There's the Colgate bench. Fred Dunlap is the Colgate head coach as well as athletic director. That's not Fred right there. One of the Colgate assistants. Syracuse has won the toss and Ingram and Owens. Ingram on the left, Owens on the right are back to receive the kickoff of Rory Crump. And we're underway in the Carrier Dome at short, and Owens has it at the 12. Michael Owens returning it up the middle. And Owens is stacked up as he gets to the 35-yard line. We're going to look at Colgate on defense as Syracuse comes on the field. It is a crowd estimated at about 45,000 on a beautiful day in Syracuse. Michael Owens checking out. And Don McPherson coming on. The Syracuse offensive line of Stopel, Flannery, Garrett, Bednar, Sims, and Kelly, and what a job they have done. And the backfield, starting backfield, McPherson, Drummond, Johnston, Kane, Deval, Glover, and Pat Kelly, and Syracuse opens up with a slot to the right. Three down linemen, now four by Colgate. That's Glover motioning. the option look the quick pitch out to Tommy Kane he's got a blocker in front of him Kane down the sideline with great balance what a job by Tommy Kane exhibiting his athletic ability right off the start and he has a Syracuse first down up to the 49 yard line Tommy Kane showing the athletic ability that people have come to expect from the youngster out of Canada who has done such a super job, much of an acrobatic uh, ability. Panos, Khalif, Douglas, and Warwick, the front four for Colgate. Occasionally they'll give you that odd look with the nose man, Jaworski, Minuski, and Modi, Spicer, Aldero, Bavel, and De La Rosa. And it is the fullback Johnston breaking it into the clear. And Johnston carries it into Colgate territory at the 35-yard line. Perhaps one of the best fullbacks in the East, and Coach Mack knows it, Daryl Johnston, and perhaps not only a good running fullback, Dave, but just a tremendous blocker who does not get a lot of credit every time Owens or Drummond makes a big run, but uh, he's up there knocking people down, so he's a super fullback, has been very effective. Syracuse picking up big yardage on the first couple of plays of the game. And it is Robert Drummond getting the call. Drummond is brought down after a short game. Playing a little trap up inside, and they, they trapped Panos 99. Tony Khalif making the stop on the play. is a senior out of Wilkesbury, Pennsylvania. He's had three fumble recoveries on the year. Second down now, and a six for Syracuse. Drummond with four yards on the first carry. Don McPherson needs 105 yards of total offense to become Syracuse's all-time leader. Bill Hurley right now. Number one. Early outside is Nick Pettis. Long count by McPherson. Here's the option. 
to look and he hits to Drummond. Trying to get outside, he gets an initial block, and Robert Drummond has a Syracuse first down inside the 25-yard line. Up on the tackle. Aldero and Bell coming up out of the secondary to make that stop. The reason why the secondary came up is because Kane got such a good block on the outside on the linebacker. You see the numbers on Drummond, and they have made good yardage against Colgate defense, and they are angling Panos, number 99, right there at the bottom of the screen in towards the line of scrimmage. He gets down a three-point stance, and you see him right there. Matt Davis steps off the line and comes in motion. They like to run that way, and that's what they're doing this time. And Drummond cuts it inside. Robert Drummond brought down by Greg Minuski and Matt Jaworski. He gets across the 20-yard line. Usually when Davis steps back to that wingback spot, he comes in motion and he's a big blocker coming at you. Yeah, both of those people uh, who are tight ends up around 240 or 250 and 6'4 and 6'6 six, six, respectively, you get a lot of good blocking out of those guys from that position. Turnell Sims, there he is, 62 right there, redshirt freshman who's done such a good job for Syracuse getting in position. Second down and seven as McPherson marks out the signals. Two tight ends, the option look. Now McPherson going down the middle. Touchdown, Tommy Kane. Tommy Kane running that post pattern, and Don McPherson comes up with another touchdown pass, his 11th of the year. And for Tommy Kane, that is his seventh touchdown reception. He needs only one more to tie the mark, set by Mike Ciano a couple of years ago. Six to nothing Syracuse. On the opening drive of the game, they march right down the field. So Syracuse marches 65 yards, and they're on the scoreboard. And now Tim Vesley will try to make it 201 consecutive extra points. It is the longest streak in NCAA history. Perfect snap, and the kick is up, and it is good. We'll be right back after these words. say is don't miss the Boston College Eagles Tuesday night on Nessie. And as we come back, here's a look at the touchdown pass McPherson to Kane. He really put a lot of zip on it and Kane ran a perfect post pattern. And when you get the kind of blocking and you get that amount of time and you've got such a receiver, Dave, it's a, it's a very tough combination for Colgate to stop. And you saw that they could not stop at that time. Tim Vesling has the football teed up near the middle of the field. Normally, he's along the left hash mark. And we may get our first look at Kenny Gamble. Gamble and Stacy Harris are back deep for Colgate. Gamble is the bigger of the two. They stand like that, so uh, you can't place the ball on them. And they'll stand like that and then break after the kicker approaches the ball. Okay. Each, each is averaging 24 and a half yards per return. And it is going to be a non-returnable as Stacy Harris will down it under the advisement of Kenny Gamble deep in the end zone. And so the Colgate Red Raiders, the sided underdogs coming in, now get the ball for the first time, and they're down by seven points. We'll look at the Colgate offensive line, Mike Cote, Greg Robitaille, Robinson the center, Brian Smith, Brian Fennell, the right side of the line. Damon Phelan will start at quarterback, Gamble and Buckner, Chafee, Brown, and Ori is the tight end. And as they come to the line of scrimmage, wide receivers to both sides. The tailback is Gamble. It's a reverse coming, and Buddy Brown looking to throw, perhaps, Taking his time in the grass. Now he throws it upfield and it's incomplete. Intended upfield for the tight end, Mike Ory. I don't know if that's who it intended to start out to be for Ory. What a, uh, what a first play. Let's see if they call him in the grass. They might have, and I believe they will. They'll mark that as a loss back to the 15-yard line. So it, it, it goes as a running play and a loss of five yards. The pass never happened. And now it is second down at 15. 
Glenn Chafee's in slot to the left. Here's the first look at Kenny Gamble on the draw. Gamble has running room. Gamble at the 30-yard line. That's all the indication you need that he is a bona fide big-time running back, Kenny Gamble. Robinson, number 50, gets a good block on Gregory. Watch right here from the end zone. Watch Gregory, 93. Whoops, he takes him that way, and then they get a good lead block, and that's why the hole opened up. And I think that Gregory moved to his left, and Robinson just let him go that way and helped open up the hole up the middle. It is a Colgate first down. So the Red Raiders able to spring Kenny Gamble on his first carry. Syracuse, the nation's sixth rate in defense overall and sixth against the run. Here is a little play action fake and Phelan on the run completes it upfield. JP has it. He's out of bounds at the 40 yard line. This could be another Colgate first down. And the Syracuse defense, Gregory, flanked by Fraze and Burnett. It is a Colgate first down. Freiburg, Ward, Bavaro, and Wooden. And the secondary of Ingram Holmes, Mangrum, and Paul. Back to back first downs by Colgate. Fred Dunlap, through the years, has really been an outstanding offensive coach. On first down, and Gamble cutting it back. Gamble is five and six yards. And Colgate has marched to the 46 yard line. Ryan Smith, 71, nice block downfield away from the play. The reason why that's important, Dave, is that you get the indication that Colgate is not going to lay down and say, ah, these guys are much too good for us. They are really firing off the ball and going after people. And number 71 was Smith was right downfield into Syracuse players. A.J. Thomas signaling number one. And Kenny Gamble cutting him back. Wooden has got him, but he loses him. Gamble cuts it upfield, and he is running hard. Kenny Gamble has five more yards, and they'll spot it just shy of a 50-yard line. Well, they pulled a tackle on the guard. Smith, 71, got in front of it, but you did see Terry Wooden actually got inside the play, but that's all talent that Gamble did right there, Dave, and he is a super back, and Coach Mack said that he is a Division I football player. There's his numbers for the season, 178 carries, 821 yards. He got 188 last week against Division I Army in an upset 22-20, and they credit Gamble, of course, with a lot of help in keeping Army off the field. Bogey brings in two tight ends on third down and very, very short. Phelan, Gamble picks his hole, gets the first down. David Holmes had a chance at a number 38, but Derek Ward finally put him down along with Wooden. But Colgate has their third first down, and they're into Syracuse territory at the 48-yard line. You know, one of the things that Coach Dunlap said coming into this game was that the problem with Colgate was a spotty offense, and the defense had played reasonably well. And uh, right now, his offense is certainly playing more than reasonably well. And there's Fred on the sideline. Coach and athletic director underwent open-heart surgery during last season, missed six games. Phelan on the rollout, getting time, now getting pressure, now puts it upfield. He's got a completion. Buddy Brown down to the Syracuse 35-yard line. The moving pocket and Damon Phelan completes and Colgate on the march. We've got some exuberant uh, Colgate players. Ryan Smith was being held away by little buddy Brown. Well, he, uh, he got into a shoving match. He's the guy, Dave, that I said was downfield blocking. There he is, Smith. And he's going to take a little vacation. Let's see if we can see what happens. There's the play. Do a good job on Gregory by Robinson, but then he gets rid of him. But Phelan, I think, doing a good job. Stops, starts up again, a la Doug Flutie, and just rifles it to Buddy Brown. He did look a lot like Flutie on that play, freelancing. They brought the tight end in motion, unusual looking play, and they get short yardage. Kenny Gamble to the right side. Kenny Gamble is inside the 35-yard line to the 33. Well, this drive may serve as a wake-up call for the Syracuse defense that has not displayed any of its uh, traditional nastiness on this opening drive. Maybe Smith will get him going, number 71 from Colgate, because he is playing for all the marbles. He's back in. They took him out for a play to get him to cool down a little bit. Damon Phelan started the year at quarterback, dropped to third string, became a wide receiver, and now is back as the first-team quarterback. Moving pocket left, reversing right. Harry Wooden's got him for a huge loss. The line of scrimmage is the 33, and this sack is going to be right at midfield. A 17-yard loss by Terry Wooden. 
Without a doubt, one of the best linebackers in the East, Terry Wooden, number 90, one of his best things is his speed, and Wooden up two sacks, a pass breakup, and one fumble recovery, and he's not hurting his stats right there. That's his third sack. And Terry Wooden out of Connecticut helps the Orange out with a 17-yard sack. Rick Evans in the game has a flanker way out to the left, Phelan retreating. Syracuse dropping back, extra coverage. And in the flash, the ball is fumbled. It's loose on the sideline. Does Syracuse have it? Yes, they do. Look at Dick McPherson in there with the emphatic signal. Syracuse conceded the underneath pass, which Colgate gladly took, and then the fumble on the play by Buckner coming out of the backfield. And Colgate, despite moving well, has given up the football. Well, he really, Buckner gets hit. That's Ingram up late after he was hit by Mangrum, and it's Marcus Paul who sits on the ball, and then he gets some help, and then you see the Mac made it right on the sideline. You know, the recovery of the fumble, the man who recovered may have had a shoulder on the sideline. Now Syracuse gets it back. They're leading 7 to nothing. McPherson on the draw play. Robert Drummond cuts it left. Robert Drummond running hard. Into Colgate territory at the 44-yard line. Pavel made the stop, but as usual, Drummond makes you pay for it when you tackle him. He is a tough, hard-nosed kid who likes to run people over. And there's Colgate saying, hey, look, we can get these guys. We were doing all right until we had that one mistake. And Fred Dunlap talking to Damon Phelan, number seven, who Dave has also played flanker this year. Pat Kelly is in the slot. Will he go in motion? Yes, he will. And McPherson on the straight drop. He has both backs out. He's going low for Kane. He's ahead of the field. Touchdown! Tommy Kane. Touchdown number eight on the year. And touchdown pass number 12. By Don McPherson. He is just simply outrunning every secondary he has faced. Tommy Kane out of Montreal, Canada. Well, he shouldn't feel too bad. He did it against Penn State. He's done it against anybody who's up there. You know, his speed is somewhat deceptive, apparently, because people uh, can't give him a big enough cushion. Once again, Kane is able, and then so. Looks like a post pattern again. Now Vesling out of the hole to Todd Philcox. Extra point number 202. And it is 14 to nothing Syracuse. Fight breaks out. We'll be right back. No sport has changed more over the past few years than tennis. It's more colorful, competitive, and controversial than ever. Tennis Magazine delivers all the action. The conflicts, the stars, the big matches, the new equipment, and the tips that can improve your game. Get a year of tennis for only $9.97, less than half the newsstand price. Call 800-228-4420. You'll also get our free booklet with tips to improve your game. Call 800-228-4420. The Eagles will be flying high on Nesson this fall. It's Boston College football. And you'll want to be here Tuesday at 7.30 p.m. when the Mountaineers of West Virginia challenge B.C. at Alumni Stadium. The Eagles prevailed last year at Morgantown on the strength of four field goals and a touchdown run. And this year's game should be no less exciting. It's Boston College football. The Eagles against West Virginia. Tuesday at 7.30, only on your New England Sports Network. Here it is, the second touchdown pass, McPherson to Cain. De La Rosa, 15, is closest to him, but he can't get there in time, and he just, Bavel, 45, was there, but you just can't give that man that kind of cushion. And, of course, that's easy to say, but Tommy Cain has outrun every secondary he's faced. You know, Cain was kind of ignored in any of these preseason all these teams and things. And of course, he was hurt last year, which is part of it. But I got to believe that uh, he should certainly be in the running as an All-American candidate. Tommy Kane, a junior who is having a spectacular year for Syracuse University. Now, the third kickoff, or the second by Vesling, as Syracuse leads 14 to nothing. This one will be returned. Stacy Harris has it at the four. 15, 20. 
Good block by Gamble allows Harris to get all the way out across the 30-yard line out of bounds of the 34. And the Syracuse defense will come on. Once again, quick strike capability by Kane and McPherson. You know, you got to get the feeling that uh, you could do that all day, that nobody can really stop that. That's got to give you some confidence when you know that you can just run a post pattern and get it to Kane, although it might not be that easy. It certainly has been so far today. And the Colgate offense gets it for the second time. Now the deep handoff to Kenny Gamble. And Gamble picking up yardage with just about every carry. You know, they're, they're using that draw look, I think. They're really using the speed of Syracuse against them, the linemen. They're letting them make a move and then take him in that direction and hoping that Gamble can find a hole, and so far it's been successful. We've well, got to do that when, when the defense is bigger and stronger. Allow them to take themselves out of the play. Yep. Buddy Brown going to the left. A.J. Thomas to the right. Damon Phelan has shown himself to be a, an excellent athlete at the quarterback spot. Oh. He's got contact initially as he wanted to uh, throw the quick pattern, and he's dropped right in his own tracks. Burnett, kind of a story. Rob Burnett, who has played so well this year also defensively, kind of a surprise out of Corum, New York. Six foot, 254. Coach Max said he expected him to come along, but not quite this fast. And boy, once again, he has proven himself consistent in every game, including Penn State. Nick McPherson said this week he was not worried or concerned about this game. There is Kenny Gamble. What speed, what moves, and Marcus Paul brings him down, but now before Gamble is across midfield. Getting back to that comment by Dick McPherson, he did not say that in any way to uh, put down the Colgate program, but just to talk about the confidence he had in what his team was doing. And that is uh, proven very accurate with five minutes to go in the first quarter. You know, this is probably, uh, along with the Navy game, the game you've got to worry about your team being up for. There's 48 yards so far for Kenny Gamble, proving the athletic ability that he has. Now the double play action fake on the run. It's failing upfield. Juggling catch is made. And the receiver carries it, Jeff Crowell, down to the Syracuse 37-yard line. That's going to be a Colgate first down. Pretty good job of slipping tackles. Once again, Brian Smith, 71, downfield for the Red Raiders, making a good block. He's 6'2", 270, senior, out of Sparta, Wisconsin. There's a look at Brian Smith. Whole game with the first down, five minutes to go at the Syracuse 37-yard line. Here's that look again on the fake to Gamble. He stays in the block, and the pass is upfield and incomplete intended for Crowell. Crowell is senior out of Wheeling, West Virginia. Pretty good size, 6'1", 200 pounder. Now, Colgate's win against Army last week was considered an upset. Maybe so much so the fact that Damon Phelan, who is the starting quarterback today, and played in that game and had a good game, but earlier in the season, Dave had been relegated to a wide receiver spot as they had a little quarterback go around, and however, Phelan seems to have established himself and is the number one quarterback at this point. And they are eating up some time. Colgate wants to get on the scoreboard. Here's the delay to Gamble outside, and Gamble carries the tackler with him. That was Navarro. Just a beautiful runner to watch. Very fluid. And you know, people have talked about the fact that well, they don't play uh, that tough a team. They have a pretty good schedule. They play Division I teams every year, Army, Syracuse, Duke, they played this year. But I think that anybody who sees Gamble, you don't have to question his ability. Phelan throwing the football well. And Gamble hoping to follow in the footsteps of Rich Ehrenberg, Mark Van Egan, Marv Hubbard, Colgate running backs. Who went on to excel in the National Football League. Here we've got a third down and one with the double tight ends. Gamble, penetration in there by Ted Gregory, and Gamble brought down. Stop shy of the first down and lose yardage on the play. Four down territory now, and I believe Colgate is going to go for it. Yeah, they're definitely in four down territory. There's another surprise, not a surprise, Ted Gregory broke a leg last year, and People might have wondered what his form was going to be like. Well, I guess you can see if you watch these games, he is in super form. Colgate comes out of the huddle. 
And on fourth down, and about four, Phelan is rolling. He doesn't have a receiver, and he is brought down shy of the first down. Phelan did what he had to do, stretch the play out, keep it going as long as he could, but he ends up short by about a yard and a half, and Syracuse takes over on down. Chris Ingram makes the stop, and the crowd applauding the defensive effort of the Orangemen. Mangrum also 28 helped out. The secondary has been very solid this year for Syracuse after a year in which they weren't sure how they were going to do. By the way, the Syracuse record for touchdown catches in a game is four held by Tony Gabriel, another Canadian product. He caught four touchdown passes, as I recall, in a game against Miami of Florida, all, I think, in one half, maybe even in one quarter. Syracuse leads 14 to nothing. And they keep it on the ground with Johnson, the fullback. Getting short yardage up to the 32 or 33 yard line. Tackled by Minuski, the linebacker who Colgate feels is as good as anybody around. And Syracuse has now got a second and about seven. Second and seven from the 32 yard line. still with a three down lineman, Nick Panos, number 99, is the end who is angled in. His name is comes in motion. And they show a blitz look, and McPherson running that short side option, Michael Owens didn't really have much room to turn it upfield. He just got back to about the line of scrimmage. Minuski, the linebacker that we've been talking about, shot the gap at the last minute, and they actually had then with four down linemen, and Minuski was a five-man front. And I think that's what they feel that they can do to beat Syracuse, or at least to stop them, to slow them down offensively, is to do some blitzing inside and try to stop the game before it gets going. Third down now and six. Deval Glover didn't catch a pass against Penn State. He goes wide to the right. Kane is to the left. We've got single coverage on Tommy Kane. We're going to try to bump him up in the line, perhaps. They don't bump him at all. Kane gets a flying start down the middle. Kane has the ball at the 45-yard line. Running the short post pattern that time. Well, you're right, they were one-on-one, -on -one, but they sent Sheldon Spicer, number three, who was a back, defensive back, and what that did was that let them get some time. They thought they could put more pressure on him that way, but they hit him in a good grab up to the 45, as you said, Dave. Spicer, a corner, that was a corner blitz. Tommy Kane with his third catch, fourth catch of this first quarter. They're under two minutes to play as McPherson gives it to Owens on the draw, stumbling a bit. And he's hit and dropped from behind. Michael Owens brought down by Nick Pannis as he carries down to the 41-yard line of Colgate. Minute 25 seconds to play here in the first quarter. If you wonder if you might know Damon Phelan, Phelan out of Carlisle, Pennsylvania, the quarterback for Colgate, and of course Michael Owens out of Carlisle, and hopefully they'll be able to say during basketball season next year that Billy Owens out of Carlisle, Pennsylvania is in the orange. Syracuse using two tight ends, and now Davis again motions, and the option in the direction that Davis went, McPherson is dropped. Nice play defensively. Fidel, 47 on the outside, slanting in, and they're really slanting towards the middle, trying to stop that inside game and force it to the outside, try to jam it up. But Fidel was down on a three-point stance and really came in very, very hard and low. Ball's back at the 42 yard line. Clock running now with 35 seconds to go in the first quarter. Unofficially, Tommy came with 98 yards on four catches. And there's a look at Tommy, flying wide out to the left. count by McPherson. He's looking long. He's going for Kane once more. The ball is wobbling, and it's caught! His third touchdown catch in the first quarter. What a performance by Tommy Kane as he ran under the wobbly pass that time. And the two, McPherson and Kane, combined once again. This man is having a career in one quarter. And he has just set the all-time Syracuse single-season touchdown reception mark, his ninth touchdown catch. It is 20 to nothing, and Tommy Kane well over 100 yards of receiving in the first quarter of this game. And he's only a junior. Vesseling ready to try for 
203rd consecutive extra point, I believe. It is up and good. It is 21 to nothing. Tommy Kane, 140 yards of receptions on five catches in the first quarter. It is 21 to nothing. We're going to take another look. He just one on one with Sheldon Spicer, number three, the cornerback, and it's just a foot race. It was. It wasn't any. It was a goal, and he just does the acrobatic catch at the end. What a spectacular athlete, you know. Spicer caught up to him at the end. It was not a perfectly thrown ball, and that uh, Kane just showed what a good back, what a good receiver, I should say, he is. Wow. Tommy Kane. You know, the NFL scouts come to camp and stuff, and uh, they get the films at the end of the year, and they got to be drooling for this kid, and he's only a junior. And Tim Vesling now will kick it off once again. Big article on Tommy Kane on the front page of the Syracuse Post Standard the morning of this game. And he is living up to all his press notices and clippings. The youngster had a very trouble-filled uh, childhood growing up in Montreal. Many of his friends uh, not nearly as successful as he is. But a youngster got it turned around. You know, we talk about athletes out of Canada. Syracuse has had a few. You mentioned Tony Gabriel. Uh, wasn't Bernie Ruoff? Was Bernie Ruoff, Bernie Ruoff long-time kicker. Yep. 21 to nothing. McPherson and Kane. Three first-quarter touchdowns. And now Tim Vesley. High and short. Kenny Gamble says, Stacey Harris, you take it. 15, 20. Up to the 24-yard line. And we have a marker down with 10 seconds to play in the first quarter. You know, I missed uh, Alban Browns and didn't make the tackle. That's about the first time he didn't make a tackle. Last week, he was the special teams player of the week. He made virtually, there's a clip against Colgate. Tom Tembert is the referee today. And it'll be half the distance walk off. Colgate really with their backs against the wall. Turn team on the run back. First down. You know, with some exceptions, the defensive line, and there's the scoring drive, 308. It didn't take that long when they wanted to get the ball to Kane. But guys like Alvin Brown not able to play except on special teams. He's a sophomore, 6'2", 223 pounds out of Laurelton, New York. They have a lot of good talent in the wings. And, of course, that win over Penn State in a whole game this year could really help them in the recruiting. Failing on the handoff to Gamble, cutting left and right. And Kenny Gamble brought down by Ted Gregory in what should be the final play of the first quarter. And at the end of one quarter here in the Carrier Dome, it is Syracuse 21 and Colgate nothing. They say the best ones are the hard ones. These you don't break. You try to reach an agreement. And when you do, you head for the mountains. Push. Head for the beer brewed natural as a mountain stream. Head for the mountains of Bush Beer. I'm Tom Watson. When I'm not playing golf, I like to read about it. And for my money, there's nothing better than Golf Digest. Golf Digest covers every angle of the game thoroughly. And most important, the world's top professionals like Nicholas, Irwin, and Longer show you how to make better shots from the driver through the putter. Believe me, I learn something every month. And if you're looking for new equipment, clubs, golf balls, anything, Golf Digest gives you the straight unbiased facts on how well they perform. What's more, Golf Digest takes you inside the game. You'll meet the people who are making news in golf and learn about those personalities that make the game so great. And now, you can get Golf Digest. Here's how. Call toll-free 800-453-8500 for a year of Golf Digest, only $12.77, 46% off the newsstand price, and you'll receive as a bonus tips from the tour free. Call 800-453-8500 now. 
the joint will be all shook up when the WWF turns up the Boston Garden on Nesson, November 11th at 7.30 p.m. The title is on the line when Macho Man Randy Savage goes gunning for the Hockey Talk Man. Strike with seeks revenge on the Islanders. Bam Bam Bigelow bangs into Killer Khan. Also featured Ed DiBiase and JYD, plus much more. So turn your clocks ahead to November 11th at 7.30 p.m. The WWF wraps and rolls the Boston Garden only on Nesson. Now the second quarter about to unfold. Syracuse leading Colgate. Or we should say Don McPherson and Tommy Kane leading Colgate. 21 to nothing. Those two collaborated on three touchdown passes. Damon Phelan, who has looked good, quarterback in Colgate. Again, they use that double play action fake and the throw upfield into traffic, and I think the coach may have gotten nailed on the sideline. Don McPherson, or Dick McPherson. was there and the ball was there and so was coach Mack but it wasn't complete going without a huddle Colgate quickly well this is good Colgate tried to do this on the final play of the first quarter catching Syracuse there's a screen and uh, the receiver has it Buckner but he's going to be getting tackled <laughs> looks like a car accident an orange crush right there on Buckner <laughs> and they won't run this next play without a huddle after that attracted a crowd in that first quarter Don McPherson became the Syracuse all-time total offense leader he also exceeded his own SU touchdown passing record with 13 in a season and as we told you Tommy Kane has set a new touchdown record for a receiver with his nine Rory Crump is in the game to punt and the rush is on he gets it away a low spiral Marcus Paul gets out of the way of this, and Syracuse is going to let it roll out of bounds at their own 38-yard line. In talking to some of the people uh, about the Penn State game last week, said it's great for recruiting, and they have recruits here today watching this game. Syracuse getting people in the dome, and of course, people very impressed with the facility. Coach Bob Casulo, the recruiting coordinator, and getting recruits in and out. Stops. Tommy King is going to go wide to the left. Syracuse using two tight ends. Michael Owens is the tailback. Michael Owens has the ball, cutting it back. And a good defensive play in there by Colgate to bring him down shy of the line of scrimmage. Brian Douglas, 63 on the bottom, defensive tackle. Glover in now, and Pat Davis tight end out. Bill Hurley had the previous total offense mark 5,949 yards, and McPherson is now number one. Each of those quarterbacks playing five years at Syracuse, redshirted because of an injury. Here's a little fake on the uh, draw to Owens, and McPherson still on his feet, and finally he's sacked. Delayed blitz. McNeil, 79, got him, but they sent Minuski late, so they sent a five-man rush at McPherson, and they had pretty good coverage on Kelly. We'll see what he saw. Watch Minuski. There's 58. There he goes. He gets picked up, but... 79, as we said, McNeil finally brings down the quarterback. There's Coach Gregory Pasqualone. Doing a little diagramming there with Paul Pasqualone, Derek Ward looking on. Telling him what kind of blocking they're doing on him. And Split backs now on third and long. And everybody's out in the pattern. The offensive line protects well. McPherson nearly overshot his man. But the Val Glover coming over the middle makes the first down catch. Don McPherson rifling a bullet upfield to DeVal Glover. And Syracuse will have another first down. Good protection. You know, there was nobody even close to him. And he led DeVal Glover in the ball just a little bit behind him. It was perfect height right in the hands. And Glover just reached back, made a good grab. Glover without a catch against Penn State. He had one against Missouri, two against Virginia Tech two against Miami, Ohio, and three each against Maryland and Rutgers. So as uh, Kane has become the super receiver, uh, they haven't been throwing too much uh, in DeVal's way. 
And he has his first catch. Syracuse first down at the Colgate 47. Michael Owens looking for running room. Owens trying to get outside. And the last man who had a crack at him brought him down. Sheldon Spicer on the tackle. Owens out of Carlisle, Pennsylvania, as is Damon Phelan, the Colgate quarterback. In that first quarter, Syracuse piling up the yards, 197-73 by Colgate. And the Orangemen leading it 21 to nothing here in the second quarter. Their first possession of this stanza. Chris Barnes, the running back. Barnes down to the 20-yard line, still on his feet, breaking tackles and taking it all the way down to the 11-yard line. Chris Barnes in what may be the longest run of his career. But there is a flag down as he carried it from the 43 down to the 11, a 34-yard run by Chris Barnes. Barnes out of New Jersey, uh, a fullback who is ready to go at a moment's notice. He gets good blocking up front, and then he just breaks tackles and showing great moves, 5'11", 220 pounds, and balance. Look at that. Unfortunately for Chris, it's not going to go for anything. And they're going to bring it back. That was far and away the longest run of his career. Not only will they bring it back, but they'll walk it off against Syracuse in a personal foul. And an explanation from Tom Temmer to uh, Dick McPherson. Colgate was offsides as well, so he got offsetting penalty. Back where we started from. But Syracuse paid the bigger price. Barnes is the kind of guy who will go in and do whatever he's told as we hear these. Personal foul. Ah, two personal fouls. Offsetting fouls. Repeat second down. All right, so the infractions were equal, but the play comes back. Don McPherson has been perfect. Six out of six, 155 yards. So I wanted to check on that because I didn't I didn't remember an incomplete pass, and apparently there has not been one. Six for six, 155. Now it's Glover moving across. And McPherson with a double play fake. Rolling left, trying to throw back Ryder, keeping it. He tucks it in, he cuts it back, and Don McPherson carries it inside the 35-yard line. That's going to be good enough for a Syracuse first down. McNeil once again in the tackle, the defensive tackle. Helped out by Minuski. Brett McNeil is a freshman out of Nepean, Ontario. That's a suburb of Ottawa. They have a number of Canadian players also on the team. They've got a great sports complex in Nepean. AstroTurf fields, softball, baseball fields, tremendous indoor arena. Don McPherson from Long Island replacing Buffalo Bill on the record books. Both very similar type quarterbacks. Here's Owens on that little counter look. Michael Owens down to the 30-yard line. Linebacker Minuski again up for the tackle. Tommy Kane a year ago broke his leg in the Army game. Came back later in the season. I recall one game in which I think Kane was wearing gloves and Dick McPherson, perhaps it was the Boston College game, got a little upset with uh, Tommy Kane and yanked the gloves right off his hands. That's right. I thought he might have yanked his hands off his arms. <laughs> <laughs> Well, he hasn't done anything new. You see no mittens or no gloss. <laughs> he hasn't done anything but great things this year. McPherson pop pass. Kelly, what a target. Carries it down to the 11-yard line, which was where Syracuse was a couple of minutes ago. You know, Kelly used to be on the other side of the line. He used to be a quarterback when he was in high school. was recruited as a six foot six quarterback out of high school. Made the transition to tight end. Learned the position. And uh, he really, I think, is, uh, is going to get picked up by somebody in the NFL next year because he is not only a good blocker, but he is an excellent receiver. And he's, I've said a couple times, heading up towards 6'7". And boy, he is a big target. What a target. He threw that ball about seven and a half, eight feet above ground level. And Kelly was there to pull him down. Person and the option pitch back to Michael Owens, 10-5, touchdown! Hello, Carlisle. Michael Owens with his third touchdown of the year. 
third touchdown running the football. He also has a touchdown catch. And Syracuse now ups the count to 27 to nothing. We've still got nine minutes and 25 seconds to go in the second quarter. There he is, Michael Owens. And this man, Tim Vessling, is going to be gone after this year, but has kicked SU into the record books. It is up, and it is good. The 204th consecutive extra point, 28 nothing. We will be right back. I'm Charles Schwab. Over one million investors who make their own investment decisions trade with us. Here are a few reasons why. Sorry to keep you waiting, Nick. I had to phone my broker. Your broker? It's 9 p.m. Right. I can place an order anytime. 24 hours a day, seven days a week. You see, my broker's Charles Schwab. Oh, hold it, Dave. Isn't Schwab a discount broker? Sure. Schwab saves me as much as 70% on commissions. And you can place an order 24 hours a day? Yeah. Any day of the week. My order will be at the stock exchange when the market opens tomorrow. Well, we're making our presentation. Well, the service and discounts sound great. Maybe it's time for me to give Schwab a call. For a free booklet on how you can save up to 76% on brokerage commissions, call 800-762-3100, toll free. That's 800-762-3100. Charles Schwab, a Bank America company, member SIPC. And again, it's push-up time in the Carrier Dome. Count is up to 28. There's some one-armers. Oh, that's, that's impressive. You taught him that, didn't you? Yeah, I sure did. We may get to see uh, Kevin Green, the backup kicker, before this game is over. We should see a lot of new faces. You know, I, I was going to mention, uh, we talked about depth. We talked about guys like Alvin Brown on the kickoff team will be back, but Kevin Green is a heck of a kicker. He had a 52-yard field goal in the spring game and has got quite a leg. A transfer out of California, junior college ranks. We haven't even seen Rob Moore yet, the man who caught the 80-yard touchdown pass to open up the Penn State game. Also had the 71-yarder against Missouri. It's 28 to nothing. Syracuse out ahead of Colgate. Meslin's kick will be returned at Stacy Harris at the seven. And Stacy finds an opening. He's at the 35. And he's down. Was your man Alvin Brown around the town? Uh, he's, he's around, but knock him down, Alvin Brown hasn't been uh, as productive as he was against Penn State. Stacy's running the wrong way. <laughs> 31 yards. Easily confused during the dome. Special teams for Colgate are good. They have done pretty well. There's the scoring drive, nine plays, 56 yards, and Michael Owens on a 12-yard rumble into the end zone. 28 to nothing. Colgate still got to play their game. They've been able to move the football against Syracuse. And here is Kenny Gamble picking up four yards right up the middle. Yeah, he sure did. It's going to be Ward on the bottom, Derek Ward. Gamble pounds the turf as he pops up, and once again, some words exchanged between the offensive line of uh, Colgate, Brian Smith, and somebody on defense for Syracuse. Second down at five yards to go. The wide receiver signaling to the quarterback. Not really much noise in. Balin. And a completion up to Rick Evans. Let's see where they mark his progress. I think he's going to be inches shy of a first down right at the 45-yard line. Rob Burnett coming into the game now defensively, and he replaces Jeff Mangrum. So they take out a defensive back, bring in an extra offensive lineman on the short yardage situation. Incidentally, it's Cote and Dominic, 85 for Syracuse. You see him pointing right there against Cote, who have been pushing each other around, and Cote is number 73. Dominic is out of Rome, New York. Cote, one of those Canadians we talked about. From Burlington, Ontario. Phelan on short yardage situation. Pitches it back to Gamble, trying to get outside, and Kenny Gamble, I think, just got enough by virtue of the fact that he fell across the yard stripe. It is a first down for Colgate. 
David Holmes up and really literally picked him right up. But he, when he came down, he was right over that first down marker. There's David Holmes, Syracuse defensive back out of New Jersey. Timeout taken. We've got an injured orange man down. It is Terry Wood. And while we have this timeout, we've got time to tell you about Drumlin's Travel. And don't forget, seats are filling up for the trip to the Naval Academy in Annapolis. The Navy game coming up the first Saturday in November. Give them a call today at 315-446-4556. Drumlin's Travel arranging airfare, round-trip airfare, two nights at the Annapolis Hilton Hotel. A ticket to the game, and they'll have plenty of time to take in the scenic Naval Academy. And Annapolis, a historic and a beautiful site. Boats along the uh, Severn River. Also, don't forget, Drummond's Travel will arrange a charter to whatever bowl game Syracuse will be playing in. You know they're going bowling, and you know the only way to go is to go on a charter from Drummond's Travel. If you went to New Orleans last year for the Final Four, you know what a great trip it was. Terry Wooden well, being taken like off the field on the shoulders of Don Lowe and Dick McPherson out to take a look at that. Left knee is what they were working on, looking at it, and you got to hope it's only a bruise. But uh, Terry Wooden is an excellent athlete, and boy, Syracuse would miss him dearly. Dearly, that's right. You know, we, you don't call his name as much. They don't have to blitz him as much because they've been playing so well as a unit. But he is an excellent athlete and probably one of the best outside linebackers in the East. He was the outstanding defensive player, in my estimation, a year ago on this team. You're right. We, have, we don't call his name as much this year. And let's see. As you can tell, Wooden not wearing a knee brace. Some schools have preventive knee braces. But the jury is still definitely out on whether they have any effect at all. David Phelan under pressure. Dominic may have got the face mask. He did. There's Dominic and Smith going at it now. And another flag against Dominic. He may be gone for the day if he keeps this up. Well, I'll tell you, number 71, Brian Smith has been just as guilty. Let's see if we can see what happens. wonder if you can get two penalties on the same play. Oh, sure. There's two flags out there. They were both against Dominic. One on the face mask and one for fighting. They went down to Dominic's legs. Dominic was probably there. He just reached the hand up. Okay, that's a face mask, so that's one. And there is That's a late Smith. hit by yep. Smith. Really unnecessary at that point. Let's put some skates on them and they'll be right at home. I don't think I don't think they ejected John. And unless they ejected Smith. Yeah. They just said he's gone. They're both gone. And it's not as if they did not have prior warning. Yeah, they, they've been pushing each other around quite a bit. It's a bigger loss, obviously, for Colgate because they lose a starter if in fact it has happened. Let's wait. We have a five yard yard. Penalty face mask against the defense. We have a dead ball, personal foul against the defense with an ejection. We have a dead ball, personal foul against the offense with an ejection. Smith and Dominic are history. And Do Dick McPherson. Oh, you'd like to have him on your debating team? I guess so. There's John out of Rome, New York, and John is not one to back down from anybody, including that man who is a good-sized kid all by himself. I'm just going to check Smith's size there, and Smith is 6'2", 270. You know, Dale, with this game now 28 nothing. It's a lot of time left. I'm sure a lot of fans wouldn't mind seeing Dominic and Smith in a room underneath the <laughs> dome go at it, and the heck with the rest of this game as they work on Terry Wooden. That's the more important thing right there. Uh, the ejection will be forgotten, but boy, if you could sell a few tickets to that one. Yeah, I'd go. I'd even buy you a ticket. Coach Mack, the intense one, and there's Fred Dunlap, who's going to be as intense and say, look, you got to get control of this game, and really, I don't think it has been bad. Uh, those two guys obviously were in need of some cooling down. This is a, a big loss again for Colgate, a bigger loss because of the fact they're losing a starting offensive lineman, a big guy, a strong guy, and with the score being what it is now. It's also a shame that a player points toward a game like this, especially from Colgate's standpoint, to play a Division I-A opponent in the dome and then get thrown out. The 
It's a Colgate first down after the penalties. Is the flutie like Phelan. And he throws upfield, and it's intercepted by David Holm. He might return this one all the way. He's at the 45, the 40, down to the 25, the 20. One man to beat, and he's knocked out of bounds. Knocked out at the nine-yard line. Out of Burlington, New Jersey, David Holmes. He saw that one and read it, and he came over, got his hands up in the air, and made a great interception. And there's David Holmes. Here's the moving pocket of Damon Phelan. I was just going to say, and David Holmes is reading the scramble and just came over from the cornerback spot as they freelance. He returns this one 47 yards. And Kenny Gamble. Yeah, that's runs him out of bounds. About the only man who had the speed to run him down. I was going to say, not too badly run out of bounds by him. It's Davis motioning again. Usually the option follows him. Instead, it's the pitch back to Drummond. Looking for running room and nice submarining type tackle in there. De La Rosa up to make the stop. 15. As you said, came in low. Stopped it before it got very far. There's the last four Syracuse possessions. You, Second. As the saying goes, you can't do any better than that. Good field position, obviously, and the number of plays, uh, 21 plays for four touchdowns, not bad. Kane is the only wide receiver. He's way out to the right. Here comes Davis the other way. And here comes Drummond looking to throw the ball. Now he puts it up. McPherson all alone. Touchdown. A little bit of razzle-dazzle. I thought he was going to try to do that, but I didn't think he'd get the pass away. So Don McPherson has now completed a cycle this season, running, throwing, and catching a touchdown pass. And his parents are here. And that makes it even more exciting for this exciting young man out of Long Island who has done so much for Syracuse football. I think he's looking at his mom and dad right now. And the kick is up and good. Syracuse came in a 35-point favorite, and they're now leading it 35 to nothing. 6.07 to go. We'll be right back. I'm with the Bruins. 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 And we're with the Bruins. Nesson delivers all the Bruins' home games right through the Stanley Cup. With Nesson, you've got the best seat in the house without leaving the house. For over 10 years, he has answered the call. And people are in trouble. And everything is going wrong. And time is running out. But there's one call he answers every Saturday morning in an old Ford station wagon that may be his most important rescue of all. He's a big brother, and he's making a big difference in the life of a boy who doesn't have a father to look to. But the alarming fact is, we don't have nearly enough men like him to help with a long list of children of color who have asked for a big brother. Right now, there are hundreds of boys all across Boston who've been waiting literally years for a man they can look to for guidance and friendship. Time is running out for these kids, but if you can make a commitment of four hours a week, you can make all the difference in the world. Just call 426-1237. That's 426-1237. You can mean the difference between a boy feeling lost and found. Brought to you as a public service by the Bank of Boston. Here's another look at it. It looked like, yeah, he was going to pass, and then, he, wow, at the last minute, you talk about athletic ability, what a pass as the junior from J.D. hits his own quarterback, Don McPherson, on a razzle-dazzle, making it 35 nothing. Robert Drummond is a passer this year. is now two out of two, and he has a touchdown pass. 35 nothing. Tim Mesley. Picks this one low. And it's going to be, from the goal line, Kenny Gamble. Gamble to the 20, 25. Kenny 
And Kenny Gamble back to the 28-yard line. Colgate has had pretty decent field position as Kenny Gamble gets up. And you can see that this man is a super athlete. Ryan LeBaron in the game, number 40, playing at a defensive end or outside linebacker spot in place of John Dominic. Looks unusual to see these scoring drives under a minute. Yeah. Here's Robert Drummond, smiles on the sideline. Phelan on the handoff to Gamble. Gamble has nice running room, and he takes it up to the 36-yard line. LeBaron in number 40. We're getting some people in. LeBaron in to play a linebacker after Dominic ejected. Holmes on the corner. He got a nice hold on, uh, on Ward on that play. A lot of intensity. Buddy Brown is wide to the right. And A.J. Thomas is out to the left. There's Phelan. Freiburg pursuing. Gamble does a good job to pick it off the ground, and Gamble is brought down by the bird-dogging David Bavaro. You know, the more I see Colgate running this offense and failing it, the more it looks like uh, Doug Flutie, the way he runs and then reverses his field and tries to make something happen. And let's see, turns right around. Good job by Freiburg. Oh, he got away with something there. That pass hit the ground. Looked like a one hopper. <laughs> Let's see, did I they, think he's saying the same thing. Did they give him the completion or not? No, I don't think so. It's third down. Third down and four. Wide side of the field is to the left, to the top of the screen. Evans is flanked to the right, number 32. Here's an option look by Colgate and Gamble. Puts his head down, and he is going to be short in the first half. Good pursuit. They're trying to get people to the outside as quickly as possible. Pulled Robitai, but it wasn't enough. They're going to come up about a yard and a half short. Rory Krupp is on the punt. Tommy Kane, who returned one for a touchdown this year, only to have it called back against Rutgers is the deep man. He's got three touchdown receptions already. He's going to get a try, perhaps, right here from the 22. And Kane brought down at the 25-yard line. Fine downfield tackle made down there. John Cheney, five, Returned made the tackle. And I think he took a knee through the face mask and got hit in the face. So he's going to take a rest. And they're going to take an official timeout to help Don Charney. Check that. Very good, very fine defensive play by Charney. Don't forget, this is a place to see every play of every game during the Syracuse football season. And next week, we'll be in Pittsburgh for the game between the Orangemen and the Pitt Panthers. Many people feel that Pittsburgh could be the toughest hurdle for Syracuse en route to a perfect 11-0 season. And it's never easy playing at Pitt Stadium. I'm sure they don't want to hear about that, but I guess when you get good, people do project, and I think you're right. Boston College and West Virginia are always tough. Navy down there be undermanned, but, well, you hate to play those service academies in that type of position. Charney is on the sideline, number five, and they're looking at his forehead. Meanwhile, Syracuse goes back to work on offense. Kelly is in the slot to the left, and they keep it on the ground with Johnston. Just brute strength, and look how he covers up the football. A la Larry Zonka, up to the 34-yard line. Very close to a first down. Darrell Johnston does so many things so well. Remember when they used to consider uh, Zonka a huge fullback, and uh, 6'1", 231, Johnston, as far as size, is nothing spectacular in the fullback position. You've got a kid like uh, Craig Hayward at 265 pounds. Johnston, a fullback averaging 10 yards a carry this game. Syracuse left side of the line, got off the ball quickly, and Johnston is into the secondary and taking people with him. That's the way to soften them up and not let your 
Wyman get into that uh, mix-up situation we had with Dominic and Smith. They're just quick hitters, and Johnston into the linebackers very quickly. You know, Dale, the, the old line in football is you've got to establish the run in order to pass, but I really think this season it's been the opposite for Syracuse, and certainly in this game it has been that way. Deval Glover is moving across. A dynamic Syracuse offense. Don McPherson running the option, keeping it himself. McPherson into the clear. McPherson down the sideline, 15, 10, 5. He dives in, touchdown. Now he's done it all in one game. He's thrown for three, he's run for one, and he's caught a touchdown pass. And all in front of his parents. The whole family's here, his mom, dad, and brothers. Maybe we can get a shot of him later, but he is really, there's the Godzilla, they call it Donzilla. He got it before the Penn State game. A friend of his gave him a little doll and uh, like Godzilla, and he's been keeping his locker as a good luck charm, and it certainly hasn't hurt him today. Officials threw a flag on the oh. play. The officials threw a flag on the play. Let's listen. Probably a clip or an illegal block. Holding against the offensive team during the run. Repeat, first down. <laughs> oh, that's too bad. You see the blocking they had. They ride Johnson, the fullback. There's the pitch. Drummond's available. He just cuts back inside off the block by Johnston. And you'll see the flag was back there. The official got, that's the second time one of those guys. There's a face mask. And the guy who threw the flag got knocked down too. And I'm not sure his foot was not on the line either. That was an interesting play. Well, you saw it, but it really never happened. That's right. Erase that from your memory banks. In motion is Glover. Here is Drummond running into one of his own men, cutting him back, and he's brought down at the 40-yard line. Three minutes to play in the first half. Craig Stoppel getting into one of the defensive backs, and that's a mismatch in size. Stoppel at 300 pounds down with those guys who usually weigh in around 170, 175. Donnie Mack with the C on the jersey indicating the captain. Second down and three yards from just inside the 40-yard line. Colgate showing a blitz. Syracuse hands it off to Drummond. And Robert Drummond has a Syracuse first down at the 35-yard line. The clock will stop with 2.20 to go as they move up the chains. You know, as you look at the Syracuse team, see some of those old films with the white pants? The orange pants, I think, look so much better than the white pants. Syracuse first down. Drummond not having a bad day, about six yards of carry, five and a half, actually. You know, in the 1959 season, Syracuse wore the white jerseys and orange pants for every game. Is that right? I didn't know that. There have also been years when Syracuse dressed in all orange. McPherson on the option, wants the throw. Now he does intercept it. Intended for Kane and intercepted by Spicer. The return is into, well, just shy of the midfield stripe area. As McPherson is picked off, he was trying to loft it to Tommy Kane and he underthrew him. So instead of having the touchdown run, Don McPherson ends up uh, giving the ball over to Colgate on the interception. But he certainly showed how good an athlete he is in his running ability, and Coach Mack is going to have a little word to his star quarterback, and you never, Seven, never had to learn. Seventh interception of McPherson this year. There's Mack, Ferson, and McPherson on the sideline. Damon Phelan stepping up in the pocket. He throws it short. Was that a trap or was? As Syracuse gets national notoriety, occasionally you get reports from around the country of People errantly referring to the coach and the quarterback as a father-son team. That's right. I talked to some people last week, and uh, some of the national media coming in hadn't been in Syracuse in a while. Wanted to know if they get a hold of Ernie Davis and ask him a couple of questions. Uh, obviously, the great running back from Syracuse who died in 1963. And in his honor, they're hoping to build a statue down in Elmira at Ernie Davis Junior High School. Failing upfield, intercepted by Bavaro. 
David Bavaro gets the ball back for Syracuse on the interception. That is his third of the year. He's closing in on Marcus Paul, who has four. Bavaro out of Danvers, Massachusetts. I understand last week, Brother Mark was here at the Penn State game, as that was the last uh, game that the regulars were absent from. He just gets back into his hook zone or the zone that he's supposed to drop to and the ball intended for Buddy number Brown. one. Yeah, Buddy Brown. And he just went up in the air and Bavaro is turning into a good linebacker. Uh, you know, he's got some, had some shoulder problems, I should say. He used to pop it out of uh, joint all the time. Well, we've got a minute 38 to go and they've got man-to-man -man coverage on Tommy Kane at the top of the screen. And here's a quick toss in the flat to Tommy Kane. And Kane is up to the 45-yard line. Clock will roll. Minute and a half to go. He's close to a first down. Tommy Kane should have a shot at the all-time yardage receiving record in this game. A little hitch pass to Tommy. Let him run with it after he gets it, and he got him up about a yard short of a first down. Scott Schwadey's hold it 249 yards in the BC game back in uh, 1985. Good year for Sheldon Spicer. He's out of Rochester. McPherson on the option back to Drummond with his stay in bounds to get out and stop the clock. He gets out, I believe. And there's a flag oh, down back of the line of scrimmage. I want to tell you about the block that Kelly had downfield 84. At about 6'7", he had a defensive back and moved him about 12 yards oh, off the ball, the but it, the run and the block aren't going to be worth anything because it's going to be a holding call. During the run, against the offense, repeat, second down. That's the second time now that Turkeys has been called for a holding on a running play. Well, they get those hands out in front of them and uh, they get a hold of a jersey maybe. Syracuse is not put it in this game. McPherson and he's got a receiver drumming out of the backfield down to the 40 yard line. They'd like to get one more on the board because I'm sure we'll see a lot of different people in the second half, Dave. They set the ball. Time still 46 seconds. They have not now. They put the time in motion. And McPherson sends all his backs out, and he's brought down in the pocket. 70 and 41. That was D'Angelo, number 70 and 41. Warwick. Syracuse stops the clock now on a third down and long situation coming up with 35 seconds to go. Can you just come over to the sideline and just say, should I put it up for Tommy Kane? Well, you know, I was just going to say that. You know what? Uh, what do you want to do? You want to give one to Kane or shall we just uh, relax here and see if we can get something else going? Ivan Fears talking to Coach Mack, the man with the yellow or orange jersey shirt on, sweater, I guess I should say, goes back to us. Looks like Don uh, had a haircut this week. <laughs> and there are some Colgate fans here. That's a short drive. It's not a bad game. You know, you got an away game. You're home in 45 minutes after the game. So, although a little bit overmatched, perhaps a nice showcase for Kenny Gamble. This second half should be a, a showcase for the second and third team players. McPherson has been nearly perfect. 9 of 10, 194 yards. And he caught a touchdown pass. Ran one in, but that one was called back. For various reasons, as we looked at the yes. replay. <laughs> While this timeout's been going on, Cooper Gardner on the sideline has been practicing his punts. He hasn't been called upon yet. Well, that is one area. They've had a couple of block for touchdowns this year, and... That's got to be some concern. It doesn't look like they're going to get much chance to practice it today. Both Gardner and Hawkins have suffered the blocks. 
Here's the draw play to Johnston. Good tackle in there. Good, they, quick tackle. Uh, Syracuse uh, immediately uh, takes time. Jaworski slipped the block of Drummond, and he got inside the play, and that really was designed to break outside, but give Jaworski credit. He did a nice job. 57. So they didn't decide to put it up for Tommy Kane, but they immediately took time out. Matt Jaworski is a junior out of Buffalo, New York. Same hometown, I believe, as Ron Jaworski, but apparently they tell me no relation. Jaworski on the air, two interceptions, a sack, a fumble recovery, over 40 tackles unassisted and 20 more helping out. 35 to nothing as we uh, head toward halftime in what is the final game of the Syracuse Colgate rivalry. And don't forget, if you uh, have any questions for Coach Dick McPherson, give him a call Wednesday night on WHEN Radio. After the Syracuse game, the schedule eases up a little bit for Colgate. They play Lafayette, Princeton, and finally Boston University. Syracuse is only faced with their third, third down situation of the game. Keep Johnston in the block. McPherson's going long. Who's out there? Tommy Kane again. Tommy Kane with a record time fourth touchdown reception. Unbelievable. And Don McPherson has just tied the touchdown record for passes in a game. Jointly held by Pat Stark and Jim Delgazo and Tommy Kane ties Tony Gabriel. Adds to his single season record as does McPherson. And Tommy Kane is trotting off. How in the world did he catch that pass? Well, you certainly uh, knew that he drew a crowd. He is just having a year that is almost unbelievable. The kick is up and perfect. It is 42 to nothing. And now we will take the look at the Tommy Kane touchdown catch. His fourth of the game and his 10th of the year. Good blocking. They sent people inside, but they got good pocket or incompletion. We're told that Ted Gregory was up and walking. Well, I'm sure that Don Lowe wouldn't have let him get up and walk. Right below us, walking up the aisle, uh, Ted's wife and daughter. Yep. It's got uh, my husband is number 93. McPherson back in the game, and Johnston, that's one of the few times you're ever going to see him stop dead in his tracks. Hunt. And they're still talking down there. Now Phil Cox comes back on. I, I, I think that they just wanted to get something straight with Phil Cox, what kind of plays it was supposed to be called. I don't think it was anything, uh, but they did want to get him to the sideline and talk to him. So anxious moments for the Syracuse fans and Mrs. Gregory. Now Phil Cox back in on second and 10. The blitz coming by Colgate from the outside. There's a screen. There's the first completion, and Michael Owens has it. And Owens turns what looked like a loss into a game with his great ability. And Todd Philcox has completion number one. They're not going to take this one away from him. <laughs> He's had a couple of those. And Philcox, uh, a big kid, almost 6'5", out of Connecticut. Tommy Kane checks out of the game. 6'4", 206 are the height and weight for Todd Philcox. Who, you know, it's got to be frustrating when you're behind a guy like Donnie McPherson. You've got to realize that uh, it's going to be very difficult to beat him out. William Pennyfeather, number seven, is in the game at the bottom of the screen. On third and five. And Syracuse covers up the poor transaction. It's going to bring up a punting situation where we see Ken Hawkins on this punt. Well, John Garrett, the center, seemed to snap the ball before Phil Cox was ready for it. We don't know exactly who it was at. I don't think Phil Cox was ready, believe me. See, he's looking around. He didn't quite expect the snap. All right, Ken Hawkins is in the punt. Let's see where Ken starts and where he ends up. He's 6'7", so he's got a long stride. He's standing on his 39-yard line right now. Count of steps, too. And we get a whistle and a delay of game. They want to give Hawkins more field to work with. 
Well, he's out of Maslin, Ohio. He said that uh, he's used to being under pressure. He got one blocked last week uh, against Penn State. Schoenwolf did a great job on the block, and then he scooped it up and ran it into the touchdown. Yeah, number 75, Schoenwolf from Penn State. And they went right up the middle against Syracuse. And Coach Max said, we got some problems. We're going to try to get them straightened out. Let's watch the footwork of uh, Ken Hawkins. Now at his own 34-yard line. They knock him down. And this return won't count. Hawkins got the snap at the 34, and he landed at about the 39-yard line where he's run into. Every punt is an adventure. Either he gets rough, blocked. I think Bedell hits him. One, two, three, three-step approach, but he does get hit by Bedell. It was a 31-yard punt with a two-yard return, and now Featheroff, who the has snapper. a bad knee, is, is the long snapper. And you know that the backup snapper is sitting on the bench, John Dominic, who has been ejected. Well, they probably uh, sent a quarterback in the snap. Against the defense, automatic first down. Phil Cox likes that. He's back on the field at quarterback, and Felleroff now is being helped off. Boy, this has been a costly game for a 42-0 score. And Felleroff did the same thing last year. They lost Gregory last year. They lost Featheroff last year, and they lost Keane, all of, who, of whom have had good games. Featheroff, of course, the long snapper, and that right leg heavily bandaged. Don Lowe will get to work on it. And as we said, John Dominic, who generally does the backup snaps, has been ejected. Well, you come through the Penn State game virtually unscathed. That's the whole free. season. You know, the whole season up to this point, and you get a 42 nothing score, and they start dropping like flies. Barnes and Owens behind Todd Philcox. Lots of time to go on this one. 7.55 in the third quarter. Owens on that counter play. Owens, 25-20, puts a move on, and he's brought down by the last man who had a chance to prevent the touchdown. Bavell made the grab as he took... Michael Owens out of bounds, but not before he got good yardage. Dave Bavell, sophomore out of Hamilton, Ontario. 6'1", 200 pounder. Good size for a defensive back. Going back to that last punt. Hawkins started on the 34, ended on the 39, and with the sweep of his right leg was nearly to the 40-yard line. He covered about six yards on that punt as he was run into. Davis in the slot. Had about two and a half yards, and then he ran into a stone wall. Running behind the block of Blake Bednarz. Hole opened up inside, and then it closed down before he could make a cut. And Musky, 58, makes the initial stop. Offensive line intact with Tornell Sims. Bednarz, John Garrett, John Flannery, and Craig Stoltz. Second down and nine. It's Lover. Nobody plays him as he comes in motion. Wilcox on the run. Wilcox throwing back across the grain, and they're going to throw the flag on that. Chris Barnes was there. I, I don't think uh, there was anybody downfield. They all seem to be standing. I don't. Is there a flag down, Dave? No, there isn't. No. Barnes was in the vicinity. Owens was open on the right side, and uh, you got a pretty good idea there of how good Don McPherson is at getting away from the pressure. Phil Cox uh, obviously does not have the same mobility and athletic skills. Now they, to the wide side of the field, they really loaded that side, and they got good outside pressure on him, and he had to scramble. Third and nine. Good time now, down the middle, he's got a completion of Big Pat Davis. And Davis fought off the tacklers as he carried it down to the eight-yard line. Lost about two or three, in. well, let's see where they mark I think the they'll give him his forward progress yeah. at the eight. First down. So a good catch. I thought Davis might have lost it, but they did give him forward progress, and Todd Philcox has his second completion out of Norwalk, Connecticut. 6-4, junior. Now will they let Todd throw for the end zone and go for his first touchdown pass? 
This is a good spot to run a quarterback draw. Michael Owens taking it down to the three yard line. kind of limping a little bit. Yeah, I, I thought he looked a little hurt at the, the bottom of the pile there. Of course, a lot of running backs give you that look as they yeah. climb off the deck, suck it down in goal at the three. Owens has scored one touchdown already. Owens is perhaps a yard shy of the line of scrimmage. Fidel again got him by the legs and Michael a little frustrated and limping more noticeably now I think as he heads back to the huddle and Byron Abraham may give him a break as once again the injuries becoming a factor. Deval Glover checking out Abraham 33 in out of Utica and they go to the dead tee or the wishbone. Watch the tight end Kelly. They run behind him. No, they run the other way, and it's Barnes into the end zone. Touchdown, Syracuse. Chris Barnes gets the touchdown. Chris Barnes, backup, fullback, Middletown, New Jersey. He gives Syracuse 48 points. And if Tim Besling can't convert now, this would match the highest out point by a highest point production by a Dick McPherson team, 49 against Colgate back in 1982. It's up and it is good, and it is Syracuse 49, and Colgate nothing. We'll be right back after these words. all-around cowboy isn't always a case of throwing a perfect loop. Sometimes it's a sack of potatoes. And when you're ready for a second opinion, head for the beer brewed natural as a mountain stream. Well, that was really good. What's more? Sure. He has answered the call. And people are in trouble. And everything is going wrong. And time is running out. But there's one call he answers every Saturday morning in an old Ford station wagon that may be his most important rescue of all. He's a big brother. And he's making a big difference in the life of a boy who doesn't have a father to look to. But the alarming fact is, we don't have nearly enough men like him to help with the long list of children of color who have asked for a big brother. Right now, there are hundreds of boys all across Boston who've been waiting literally years for a man they can look to for guidance and friendship. Time is running out for these kids, but if you can make a commitment of four hours a week, you can make all the difference in the world. Just call 426-1237. That's 426-1237. You can mean the difference between a boy feeling lost and found. Brought to you as a public service by the Bank of Boston. Chris Barnes, the reserve fullback, on a little bit of a misdirection. Good faking off the left side, and Barnes came to the right side of the offensive line and got Syracuse's 48 point. The extra point by Vessling makes it 49 0. 5 0 1 left in the third quarter. Syracuse now with 97 points in the last two games, and you got to go back to the 79 season to equal that with back-to-back -back wins over Washington State, 52 to 25, and Kansas, 45 to 27. And in the two weeks before that, Northwestern and Washington State, 54 and 52 points, 106 in two consecutive weeks. That was back in 79. And Syracuse had the offense, but not the defense to go along with it. pretty much intact except Greer still in and Stuhl Weissenberg in a left tackle number 91. And David Phelan remains the quarterback. 4.55 to go third quarter. Kenny Gamble. Burnett is on top of him. Freiburg. 
And uh, there's Stu Weissenberg. So that means that uh, Freese is out getting a rest. Freiburg and Paul and England all come out now. Still Gregory Weissenberg. and Kelly talking with Don Lowe on the sideline. Just going to say uh, Stu Weissenberg got a tap in New York. A field and a juggling catch. Nicely done. Kyle Sandmore in the tight end, slanting off the line, makes the catch in front of uh, David Sapienza, the linebacker. So Colgate now with a first and 10 at their own 31-yard line. Sapienza calling the defensive signals now as he's replaced Ward. Riello in the secondary. Buskirk is in there. Sean Whiteman. Phelan on the handoff. And here's Kenny Gamble. Up across the 45-yard line. He is a rocket. He is very, very fast. And you can see why Coach Mack said that he is definitely a Division I back. An All-American, obviously, in Division I AA. The only guy in, incidentally, for Syracuse, the only starter in is Rob Burnett, number 70. LeBaron in at linebacker. Boosie now in, Riel. LeBaron, Stuhl Weisenberg, Elaine Greer on the nose. Rob Thompson in the secondary, one of the safeties. Toss up field. Buskirk makes the big hit, but the catch is made. The completion made to Brian Fair, the tight end. Okay, using their tight ends well. It's going to be shy of the first down by about a half a yard. 3.15 to play, third quarter. Alvin Brown in, number 34 at one of the outside backer spots. Slot to the left. Oh. And Gamble, I don't think he got that handoff cleanly, and Burnett stops him and shoves him down. The sophomore, they're leaving him in. I don't know how many defensive tackles they got left. Gray's out. Gregory down. Syracuse says John Dominic out with an ejection. So we've got still Weissenberg in, in Greer. So I guess we will see number 70 for a portion more. Phelan faking it to Gamble and throwing downfield. He was intended for tight end Mike Ory. It's incomplete. Riello there on the coverage. So now it'll bring up fourth down and about four yards to go. Lucy, 55, who has played well in spots for Syracuse, is out of Mentor, Ohio. Number 55, Sapienza. Number 51, who has played quite a bit, played last year. He's a junior out of Peabody, Massachusetts both rosters with a number of kids from Massachusetts and they are going on fourth and along two. And it is Phelan looking to get it through the air. He does. Ori, the tight end, makes the catch. And Ori has it at the Syracuse 34-yard line. Busberg on the tackle. Ori may have hurt his right arm. Going up trying to shake it off. Got a stinger there. get a shot on that just in the right spot. It's like hitting your funny bone. It sends those little bubbles up and down your arm. First down now. Colgate against the second team Syracuse defense. Phelan. And he just runs out of bounds as uh, he was being pursued there with a minute 45 seconds to go here in the third quarter. Klaus uh, Stuhl Eisenberg, number 91, was trying to get to him. Phelan had the sizable speed advantage. Got to get a look at uh, Stuhl Eisenberg's jersey and see if they can get all those letters on the nah, back. Of they can't. He's number 91. Good accent on the pronunciation, by the way. I like that. Here's Gamble. Tried the inside. Tried off tackle. Kenny Gamble is very close to a first down. Well, you know, he's got a neck brace on. 
And Stu Weissenberg, you can't see, I think they just have kind of an abbreviation there for it. You can tell we're down the important parts of the game here, trying to see if they can get Stu Weissenberg's name on his jersey, but 49 nothing, 122 left. You do what you gotta, Paul Fraze checks in 94. Well, we can fit it on the screen. That's what you call a big name football player. <laughs> Third down and one. Phelan has time. Got one receiver down. Oh, field. he swallowed up. Paul Fraze just ate him up on that rollout. Now they used a rolling pocket, and Fraze just took part of the pocket with him, and he has done so well this year. One of the captains. Watch 94. He takes two people Ooh. and makes three people and makes a sandwich that was Fennel blocking him. And Paul Fraze, one of the co-captains out of New Hampshire, Barrington, New Hampshire, and one of the co-captains of the Syracuse team. And Phelan again faced with fourth down. Lots of time. And now he puts it up for grabs, and it's incomplete. Short of the intended man, Crowell, with Boosie covering on the play. Syracuse will take over on downs, keeping their shutout hopes alive. Last time they had a shutout back in 1985 against Pittsburgh. They also had one in 1984 against Navy. The only two they've turned in uh, under the uh, Dick McPherson reign, and this is far and away their best defensive team. Billy Shar may be the quarterback. He's got the helmet on, getting instructions on the sideline, and here he comes. Sophomore out of Canandaigua, New York, highly recruited. University of Miami wanted him. He told me that he likes his family, didn't want to get too far away from home, and Syracuse was just perfect for him. Shar on the option handoff. It's Chris Barnes rambling upfield for 11 and maybe 12 yards. That's what you like to see. Give the ball to the fullback. Let him get up there and eat some time up on this clock. Billy Shar, the quarterback of the future, and it certainly hasn't hurt to have Don McPherson to operate as a drop back passer. And Syracuse open up the offense this season. That's the kind of offense that uh, Billy Shar should be able to run in future years. And the end of the third quarter with the score, Syracuse 49 and Colgate nothing. Maybe you think the Giants will win it all this season. Or maybe you think the Bears will be tougher than ever. And what about the Broncos or the 49ers? And who will be on top in college football come January? I'm Harry Carson, and no one knows the winners for sure. But here's one sure winner for every football fan. The Sporting News. Everything you need to know. Results, schedules, roster moves, and more every week. Detailed reports on all the teams, hard-hitting inside information, more facts and stats than all the others combined, plus up-to-the-minute news of baseball, basketball, and hockey. Now, here's news of a great half-price offer. Take a tip from Harry Carson and get in on this great half-price offer. Just call 1-800-553-4040 and receive 40 issues of the Sporting News for four easy payments of only $545. That's a savings of one half off the regular subscription rate. So call now, 1-800-553-4040. That's 1-800-553-4040. The joint will be all shook up when the WWF burns up the Boston Garden on Nesson, November 11th at 7.30 p.m. The title is on the line when Macho Man Randy Savage goes gunning for the Hockey Talk Man. Strike with seeks revenge on the Islanders. Man Pam Bigelow bangs into Killer Khan. Also featured Ed DiBiase and JYD, plus much more. So turn your clocks ahead to November 11th at 7.30 p.m. The WWF rocks and rolls the Boston Garden only on Nesson. fish in all kinds of weather from coast to coast. Each week we'll show you how to catch trophy sized fish just like this lake trout. Join us for Canadian sport fishing for the hottest fishing action you've ever seen. Each week right here on NESN, the New England Sports Network. And now the fourth quarter with Billy Shar at quarterback. Shar on the handoff and Byron Abraham running well into Colgate territory at the 43-yard line. Wholesale substitutions coming on now for the Orangemen. You know, you, 
you mentioned the depth, however, and we get a guy like Byron Abraham in the game, and Byron Abraham is a quality back. They have a lot of them. They've had Chris Barnes in at fullback. They've got a number of tailbacks, and Byron Abraham from right down the throughway, who started out at Notre Dame, is back in, and boy, I tell you, they really don't let up. These are good, good backs. Dwayne Kinnon playing a flank of back. He's way out to the right, number 43. Here's Shar. It's a busted play, and Shar carries it upfield for a gain of about three. Henry Flannery coming in at a tight end along with Terry Doherty. Flannery out of Liverpool High School. He wears number 83, and he has the knee brace or bandage on the left leg. Jake Perry also in Kim and Bagwell along with Shar. Offensive tackle number 73 is in. And Shar did a good job of turning it up. They had the option shut off. He got what he could. Penny Feather out to the right. Doherty is in motion. Here's the pitch back to Abraham. Byron turning it on outside. And there's a marker as Abraham is spilled onto the Colgate bench. Dave Bavell on the tackle. Syracuse uh, shuttling in Mike Bernard, an offensive lineman, and Dan Bokel. Rush, Rush Hodgin, an offensive lineman, comes out. Just checking Bernard out of Williamstown, New York, 6'2", 263. Another yes, penalty is beyond the line of scrimmage. Repeat, second down. They're a minute, 10 seconds into the fourth quarter. Syracuse leading Colgate 49-0. Not unexpected. Not really. What you want to see now, of course, is Coach Mack doesn't want to see this game get out of hand and get sloppy. He's had a couple of starters go down. Uh, we don't know how badly they're hurt, but he doesn't want to see anything like that happen, so he's got the reserves in, but he wants them to play well. Billy Shar has Abraham flaring out. Shar is cranking it up and going long for Kinnon. And it is a grab. A catch, but who's got it? Syracuse. Syracuse has it, and Kinnon has the catch. Dwayne Kinnon, number 43, on the catch. Deep downfield, Kinnon it is the redshirt freshman out of Thomas Jefferson High School in Brooklyn. And Billy Shar has the longest completion of his young career. Michael Owens coming in the game in the running back spot. Kinnon was a running back, and he's been playing out of a wide receiver spot. He plays just about anything, and you can see what the ball is up for grabs. <laughs> That was five, Cheney, excuse me, Charney, up with him, and he came up with the ball. And it is Abraham behind the block of Barnes, taking it to the four-yard line, and that's all. And he really came up, and Jaworski made that hit 57, stopped it down on the five. You see where the ball's placed down. Second down. Loss of the body yard. Second and goal. Second and goal. Lots of time. 12.50 left in this game. Center, by the way, Verl Miller, number 65. Out of the wishbone look. It is Barnes. That's the play he scored the touchdown on earlier. Takes it down to about the three-yard line. Earl Miller, the center out of Fort Pierce, Florida, 6'1", 290. Dwayne Kinnon on the sideline. Third and goal now. Wishbone look with Abraham Barnes. No one. And Billy Shar. Thought he'd go outside, he decided to go inside, and he's brought down by Sheldon Spicer. Well, it's fourth and goal now, and uh, Syracuse will let Kevin Green come on and attempt a field goal. Kevin Green? Kevin Green, the backup kicker, who uh, showed quite a leg in the spring football game, has come on now to attempt his first collegiate field goal. Todd Philcox is on as the holder out of Simi Valley, California. This will be a 26-yard attempt, virtually an extra point. It is up, and it is good. 
And Kevin Green, one of the two Kevin Greens on the team, has his first field goal. It is 52 to nothing, and we'll return with more Syracuse football right after this. trying to say is don't miss the Boston College Eagles Tuesday night on Nessa. All the action and excitement from New England Raceways is coming your way each week on Race Week. Race Week, the video magazine that brings you closer than ever before to the fascinating world of the super modified, the dirt modified, and much, much more. Now, you can be a part of all the thrills and spills from New England's racing scene. Race Week, coming your way each week on the New England Sports Network. Don't miss it. Kevin Green will handle the kickoff chores for Syracuse as they lead it now 52 to nothing. He is the heir apparent to Tim Besling, and here's his kickoff. High and short. Stacey Harris at the seven. Running behind Kenny Gamble. And coming in, Rob Thompson from the blind side makes the stop. He'll stay in the game in the secondary. We remind you that coming up, the road trip of the year in terms of a scenic opportunity. That's the trip to Annapolis. Drumlin's Travel has a charter going that way. Give them a call at 315-446-4556. They've got round trip airfare, two tickets or tickets to the game, two nights of lodging at the Annapolis Hilton. And Drumlin's Travel also planning a trip to any bowl game that Syracuse will be playing in. Kenny Gamble still in the game, still riding hard. LeBaron on the tackle along with Sapienza and Gamble getting up there in the yardage department. He's got to be pretty close to 100. And we'll check it for you, but Gamble having a good game. Unofficially, 20 carries at 95 yards. To midfield. Gamble, stop Rob Thompson, 25, up to make the stop out of the secondary, but boy, you don't want Gamble to get going because he, Dave, he has amazing speed. Not amazing, he can accelerate so quickly and then stop and cut. He is definitely a, a back I'm sure you'll see in the NFL next year. I'm trying to recall, Dale, if any back has had a 100 yard game against Syracuse this year. I doubt it since they've been averaging only allowing 60 some odd yards per game rushing. Here's Phelan trying to go upfield. He was ahead of the line of scrimmage, or at least thought he was until he decided to run it. LeBaron drove him out, number 40. Phelan has not had a bad game. Defensively, as we said, Colgate was fairly pleased coming into the game. They felt the offense was a bit spotty. And it just has been one of those games where Syracuse just able to do whatever they wanted, especially passing to Tommy Kane. Kenny Gamble's gained more all-purpose yards than any player in Division I AA history, and he may move up into uh, third place on the all-time college list after this game. Phelan heading to the sidelines and out. Downfield, another injured Orangeman. Currently not too seriously, it's Sapienza. That's gonna drive you crazy. You're up by 52 points, and backup linebacker, who you definitely can't afford to lose, is goes down. Carr just checks in now, 58 for Syracuse, another linebacker. Third and eight for the Red Raiders, right at midfield. Nobody came out, so it must be the only head 10 men out there. Draw play, it's Kenny Gamble, 45-40. 35 and inside the 35 yard line you get the idea that gamble would just like to break loose once and show everybody he can take it all the way you also get the idea that 
offensively, he is about the only weapon that they're going to be able to use today. They've been able to get some short passes on occasion, but the most effective way has been let Kenny Gamble run the ball. Lots of recruits on hand in the dome, both basketball and a few football recruits. And here's a pass into the secondary, and who's got it? Looks like a completion or maybe an interception. Sapienza was there, but Sanborn also the tight end. Sapienza is on the bottom along with 25. Rob, Rob Thompson. Thompson. Yep. Good grab by Sanborn. Riella was getting back. Excuse me. Uh, Sapienza. Watch Sapienza 51. Watch him get back. He sees. He starts to run to his zone, and he puts his hands up. Just tries to get a hand on the ball, but he couldn't do it. Now the crowd uh, trying to convince the defense to keep Colgate off the scoreboard. Wow. And Colgate self-destructs on that play as they fire out too early. Definitely left, left tackle or guard, I believe, left too soon. False start. So they'll walk it off against Colgate. You can see Syracuse doing a lot of passing on first down. David Phelan. On the draw to Gamble. And the hole closed quickly for Kenny Gamble that time. Fred to Riggi. Alvin Brown. Alvin Brown is. Roger Cargis is in as a linebacker as well. One of those linebackers in Sapienza. Sapienza played a lot, not a lot last year, but he played last year. And the linebacking, they thought they didn't know what it was going to be like with Favaro's shoulder and whether or not they were going to get a lot out of Ward. Ward showed up 25 pounds lighter and Favaro with a new shoulder. Brown and Thomas flank wide to the left. Phelan rolling that way, wants to throw that way. He does, and it is incomplete. Nearly intercepted by Tony Riello. That was a very tough catch for Riello to make. Riello and Whiteman there. Riello, a redshirt freshman out of Bricktown, New Jersey. Lots of redshirt freshmen on this Syracuse team getting a chance to play. Gregory is on the sideline with a knee immobilizer on, leg immobilizer, but he's laughing and uh, talking to other players, so I have to assume that they don't think it's too serious, but they're not going to take any chances. Third down and 12. Gamble flares out. They're throwing his way, and Kenny Gamble brought down from behind by Alvin Brown. So it brings up fourth down and fairly long yardage now for Colgate. They're sending their field goal kicker, Rory Crump, into the game. Crump is both the punter and the kicker. Takes off his sock, takes off his shoe. As Dunlap talks it over with Phelan, Colgate wants to get on the scoreboard from the left hash mark. This will be a 34-yard kick. On the way, and it is good. So Colgate gets on the scoreboard, and with 7.33 to go, it's Syracuse 52 and Colgate 3. Every day, America's banks handle at least $25 billion, a certain amount of which will find its way into your pocket. The question is, what will you do with it once it's there? Well, the Wall Street Journal has some pretty shrewd thoughts on the subject. Each day, the journal brings you a wealth of information about investing, saving, taxes, real estate, in fact, the whole spectrum of personal money management, as well as a concise digest of business news that could help bring you more money to manage. All in all, a subscription to the Wall Street Journal is a necessity for anyone with an interest in money. Because while there's plenty of it around, unfortunately, it doesn't come with instructions.
Call 800-336-1111 for this special introductory offer. 13 weeks for just $29.75 with a money-back guarantee. 13 weeks, $29.75. Phone 800-336-1111 now for the Wall Street Journal. Team Sport. And now the kickoff by Rory Crump. From the 11-yard line, here's the return by Ingram. Ingram flying upfield out to the 38-yard line, and he's dragged back. You don't really get to see the speed of Ingram too often in the secondary, but he can fly as well out of Fowler High School right in Syracuse. As you look down the Syracuse roster, you get people from Florida, Canada, a lot of people from Connecticut, Ohio. They really have opened up recruiting in the 80s under Coach Mack, and they will, I think, go just about anywhere to get people. California. Todd Philcox back in the game now at quarterback. 7.27 to go in this game. And the ball carrier is Byron Abraham running out of the tailback spot. Here's Ted Gregory on the Syracuse bench. First by number 55. Telling his teammates he's all right. Obviously, a major topic this week will be the health of Ted Gregory and Terry Wood. Phil Cox with the first two completions of his college career. William Pennyfeather is number seven in motion. Phil Cox with a spinner off to Dwayne Kinnon. Kinnon, I should say, didn't uh, play football until his junior year in high school. He was a baseball player and didn't really attract much attention. He, last year on the scout team as a redshirt freshman, he did a great job of, of doing things for Syracuse, and they were very pleased with what Dwayne Kinnon did, and he's going to get some playing time. He's a redshirt freshman this year, true freshman last year, but lots of recognition on the scout team or the look team. Now third down and three at the 45-yard line. Cox down the middle, and there is no flag as the receiver, Boko, was knocked off his feet. Boko really knocked down there by Noel, excuse me, uh, yes, Noel. Cooper Gardner's on now for a punt. Now, just to compare him with Hawkins, let's see where he receives the football and where he ends up. As he kicks it, he's standing on the 30-yard line. Bad snap. But he got it away. He was only three yards away from the spot where he got it. And good coverage downfield by Thompson. 30 yards, no return. 30 yards on the punt, no return. sure who the snapper was on that play. It may have been John Flannery. Yeah, I think it was John Flannery. <laughs> when he got downfield, he was a little upset with himself. Uh, they certainly uh, have to make sure they've got some other experienced people. As we said, John Dominic. A lot of teams use quarterbacks game. to snap because basically it's the same throwing motion except they're just doing it off the floor. New quarterback for Colgate and the pass upfield is incomplete. Dave Goodwin, the freshman, is in at quarterback. He started a game or two earlier this year, which uh, was to the surprise, I guess, of some of his teammates. Goodwin's only a freshman. And he is 6'2", out of Shrub Oak, New York. I was hoping you'd say that, so now I can ask you where in the where world is Shrub Oak? Oak? I have no idea. That might be near Poison Oak. On the handoff to Stacy Harris. Gamble is out of the game now as well. Well, these Syracuse football cable cast travel far and wide, and maybe somebody out there no. is watching in trouble. We certainly hope you've enjoyed the games to date. Wherever you're watching, Syracuse football, home team sports, along the Atlantic Coast, New England Sports Network, the Arizona Sports Programming Network. 
various cable systems around New York State. Goodwin with one back behind him. Puts it up down the middle, deflected, and not caught by Buddy Brown. And that'll bring up fourth down now. Rory Crump has the sock and the shoe back on. He owns the only points of this game for Colgate after his field goal. And with 5-11 to go, Crump is back to play. The Syracuse band enjoying this game, enjoying all seven games to date. As Syracuse will remain perfect, 7-0. And, oh. Oh. and a high snap, great job by Crump. He gets the kick away. Tremendous job. The markers are down already. Two markers were down before the ball was even received. The third marker is down. 37-yard punt. 37-yard punt, but I don't know what is going to happen here. I don't think I've ever seen so many markers down so early in a play without any action. Could it be too many men on the field? I, I, Max laughing. That's for touch when he's talking to the officials. It could be. At 52 to 3, anything can happen. Incidentally, one of our cameramen, Ron Frillick, predicted 56 to 3. I didn't think it was going to be quite that bad, but it is 52 to 3, and we're going to see a mark off against Syracuse. Illegal participation. Too many men on the defensive team. 15 yards, automatic first down. I guess you can't have 12 guys there. Almost had to throw a flag on the official. He couldn't get that one out correctly. Yeah. <laughs> you know, I knew teams that used to do that in high school. Put 12 people on and then quickly run off as soon as they're hoping the officials wouldn't see it. So Colgate gets it back. Goodwin on the handoff to Harris. They gobble him up quickly. Still Weissenberg and 92 Elaine Greer and Derigi also. Here's little Mackenzie Bell. <laughs> little baby of the cheerleading coach. Linda Bell's little child and uh, the cheerleading co-captain there has got her in the grasp, Amy Rose. We'll see her do the push-ups now with the baby. <laughs> Going long is Godwin. He's got a man streaking downfield. The catch is made and being pulled down inside the 10-yard line it is Glenn Chafee. And he's got something to say to Sean Whiteman as he gets up. Colgate's play of the game. Number 22 there, Sean Whiteman with Riello. And he just gets behind everybody. And Goodwin just throws it. There's 29 on the reception. That's Chafee. And that takes the ball down to Syracuse, seven-yard line, first and goal. And the Red Raiders trying to get into the end zone. They're already on the scoreboard. Godwin rolling, and Godwin throws incomplete. They intended for Kyle Sanborn. Three yards deep in the end zone. Second down and eight coming up. Thompson there to knock the ball away. Rob Second Thompson, goal. 25. Final score, Pitt Beach Navy, 10-6. In the third period. Next week, Syracuse is at Pittsburgh. The Panthers were told, victorious over Navy. On this Saturday, 10-6. In the fourth, West Virginia, 30, Godwin, the quarterback. Good one. 349 to go in the game. That moving pocket again, but no receivers. Not yet, at least. In the end zone and broken up by Riello. Jim Garn, the former fullback, lineman, guard, a linebacker. Garn actually started at a guard position at one time. Watch. Goodwin looks back, everybody's covered, then he sees somebody breaking from the corner and broken up. Riello was there, nearly overran the play. That was Evans, 32, that was going for the ball, but Riello got there just in time to knock it away on the scramble by Goodwin. Evans goes left, and Chafee is to the right. Got a little wing back, Stacey Harris on the left side. They like to hit that wing back right over the middle. Right, just on a straight goal. Not this time. And 
the slant in is incomplete. He had the angle, just didn't throw it well. Yeah, he had the inside, but uh, the ball was not delivered well. And I also thought with that little wing, Dave, that they might go have the wing back just go straight right across the line of scrimmage into the end zone. They're going to try another field goal. This one's right in front of the uprights. Colgate with a record of four and three. They'll be four and four when this one is over. And they're trying to take points any way they can. Make points. Rory Crump is the kicker. Colgate began the year by losing at Duke. And they beat Bucknell by three. Beat William and Mary by 11. Beat Cornell by 24. They were blown away by Holy Cross 49 to seven. Lost a one-point game to Lehigh, and a week ago defeated Division I-A Army 22-20. Next week, Syracuse travels to Pittsburgh, and you know the Panthers will be gunning for the Orange men in that game, as Syracuse will come in 7-0, ranked in the top 10. And you certainly hope both teams will be as healthy as they can be, and for Syracuse, that means Gregory and Wooden will be back. And you'll see that game next Sunday on many of these same cable systems. Check the local listings in your area. 52 to three, it is fourth down and Colgate has their kicking team on. You don't think they're gonna fake it, do you, Dale? <laughs> I really don't know what to expect. It's the same lineup they had out there. The holder is A.J. Thomas. He's a flanker, 88. Now they're gonna kick it and they are gonna get it. So two field goals here in the fourth quarter by Rory Club. And it is now Syracuse 52 and Colgate 6. Colgate brought some fans here. You know, we might point out Colgate does not give outright athletic scholarships, Dave. They are not a school that feels they want to go in that direction. They like the league that they're in, and even some of the schools they play do, other than Syracuse, you can give scholarships if you are a Division I AA. You just don't get as many. I believe it's 70. So there's a little difference there, and Colgate has elected not to give any out full athletic scholarships, so it would be tough to compete with a Syracuse. What they have in the past been able to be a little closer, but this series is going to get a rest. 48,000 plus turned out for today's game. What in all likelihood will be the final Syracuse Colgate game for the foreseeable future. A series that began way back in 1891. Byron Abraham and Chris Ingram are deep as we await what could be an onside kick from Rory Crump. 3.34 remaining. Hope you've enjoyed it. Now he's going to kick it deep. A little surprising there. Here comes Ingram from the 11-yard line. Chris running under control. They're not trying to do anything spectacular at this point. He takes it up to the 30-yard line. And the orange men come on. Billy Shaw will be the quarterback on this series. Russ Hodgson, offensive lineman. Earl Miller at the center. Out of Florida. We said Syracuse definitely has a uh, international flavor with Canadians and Floridians and Californians and just about every other state you can pick. Kennedy is flank left. Billy Shar is the quarterback. Shar in the option pitch to Abraham, running hard. By Abraham out in front of the Syracuse bench. Stops at 3.22 to go. Henry Flannery, number 83, at one of the tight ends. Henry Flannery is a kid who, out of high school in the Syracuse area, he's played here a number of times in high school for Section 3 championship games. He went to Hudson Valley Junior College, Community College, and bad knee injury and rehabilitated himself, transferred to Syracuse as a senior. Has not seen much playing time, but has seen probably the most today, I think, that he has seen in his career. And the ball carrier now is the other Kevin Green. There's a Kevin D. Green and a Kevin J. Green. One has a field goal. They both spell their name G-R-E-E-N-E. -E. Kevin D. Green, the running back, is out of Philadelphia. And Kevin J. Green, the kicker, out of Simi Valley, California. 
Three minutes to play in the game. Here's that counter back play. And Byron Abraham is the ball carrier. Knocked down by the Red Raiders, number 55, Noel, Dan Noel. Number 67, Chris Cordy in on the tackle. There's the clock and the score as people in an orderly fashion filing out of the dome. Syracuse scoring 100 points the last two weeks. Last exceeded in the 79 season with 106. Back to back against Northwestern and Washington State. continues to run now with two minutes to play. By the way, the 52 points, the all-time high by Syracuse in the Dome, high by anybody in the Dome. And there's Ted Gregory limping a little bit on the sideline. You can see that knee immobilizer on the left leg, and he gives a hug to Kelly, Ted Kelly, the tight end. And it's now... Seven down, one to go, as Syracuse will tell you. Record-setting performances on the day by Don McPherson and by Tommy Kane, as we have another walking wounded Ooh. for the Orangemen. Jake Carey, number 73, has, hasn't gotten a go-ahead from Don Lowe to bring him off the field, and there's Don. Well, these injured may make practice a little bit difficult well, you know, this week. That's another thing people don't think of. You're right. Uh, bad enough that you get chewed up in games, but you get chewed up in practice, too, and Kerry has played, played in the Rutgers game this year. Big tackle, 6'5", 260-pounder out of Canandaigua. Well, that man on the right, head trainer Don Lowe, will have his work cut out for him. We always kid Don about two-for-one specials. Yeah. But uh, it's no laughing matter this week. He'll be putting in some long hours. I was going to say, his room will be, uh, will be full of people, and... Uh, Lots of whirlpool baths and diathermy machines and whatever else they can get to get these people healthy. Minute 40 and the clock is running. A third down at six. And Syracuse using up all of the clock on these long counts. Here's Byron Abraham. He's going to get outside and get a first down for Syracuse. Byron is, is a player. Yes, he is. He has, gets in the game and he goes 100% no matter when he gets in. And, you know, he can help you out. There's just some quality people in front of him. And it's just a question of the fact that uh, they recruited and got some excellent people at the tailback. Robert Drummond has proved himself. Of course, Michael Owens. But you can't count out number 33, Abraham. And he's a good one to be able to count on. Now, with all the media coming to town with Syracuse's success, the auxiliary press level on the far side of the stadium. Billy Shaw lofts it over the head of Kinnon. There's McCummings with a little extracurricular activity. He looks like a good-sized kid. 6'2", 260. He's come, came to Syracuse out of Denver, Colorado. Colgate has a number of uh, Colorado players from Englewood. My alma mater, University of Denver. Right? That's right. We've mentioned, let's see, Miami, <laughs> Colorado. That's right. University of uh, Miami, Florida, uh, Portland State, and also uh, Adirondack Community College. Folks, if you're thinking of sending a child of yours to college, <laughs> forget the guy. Just call Dale. <laughs> That's right. Here's Kevin Green busting into the secondary and taking it all the way down inside the 25-yard line as we're into the final minute of this game. One run like that deserves another call. Syracuse doesn't want to pile up the points at this juncture of the game, but if he has another carry like that, he could be in the end zone. Kevin Green out of Philadelphia, redshirt freshman and fullback. He just, there's Burrow Miller, 294 pound center, leading the blocking. And Green, nice job. Now Byron's Abraham, he's got one man to beat to get in the end zone, and Abraham trips over Kinnon. He's down at the five yard line. This is reminiscent of a week ago as Syracuse is trying to score one more against Penn State. I don't think they're really trying right at this point. I think they did against Penn State. The timeout was called by the officials, of course. They have to reset the downs markers. They're on the five-yard line. Another score now would give Syracuse their highest point total 
since the 1971 season when they got 63 against Holy Cross. Of course, after they set the first down markers, they start the clock again, and Green dives for a couple. That should be the last play of the game, and I, I really believe Syracuse is trying to keep that play inside and not score another touchdown. Yep. Nick McPherson leading the march across the field. A very good friend of his. And so the Colgate Syracuse rivalry has come to an end. A lot of spirited play early. And now both teams offering congratulations to one another as Colgate falls to four and four. And Syracuse, led by this man, Don McPherson.